to have a joint form. All right, so continuing uh, with interoperability. So it really means the connectivity, transferability, it means interfaces, it means analytics. So all of these various things when we think about interoperability. <clears throat> So, as we've discussed so far, the startup ecosystems really have a lot of interactions and data. So, they have, depending on the ecosystem, size, maturity. Regardless, we have combined, we have millions of ideas, entrepreneurs, startups, talent, investors, mentors, intellectual property, uh, events, pitching sessions, pitching evaluation sessions, mentoring sessions, due diligence cases, investors making that final uh, check if they invest into startups, matching events, co-founding matching, investor matching, uh, talent matching, services, assets. So all of these are the, the, the valuable elements and pieces uh, and then all of the interactions between these valuable um, assets and actors in the ecosystem generate even more, <coughs> more data. So not only the information <coughs> about who they are, where they are, what they are, but who, what's actually happening, who was where, uh, who took part in what program, how beneficial that program was, who are interacting with whom, uh, what industries are, are emerging, and, and you name it, there's, there's a lot of data. And the, and the most important thing to really understand is that this is not some data that doesn't exist but already in a digital format. This information already exists somewhere, and that's the, the, the starting point. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, therefore we need to ask we need to start collecting that from, you know, asking from people in surveys and so forth. The question is, how do we get that information in the primary level where it already exists? So, <clears throat> to build the rationale and justification for, for the importance of the interoperability is that um, there was a study uh, several years back by um, um, by, by a U.S. Chamber of Commerce together with, uh, with a, uh, one private actor where they really did a big uh, effort to measure multiple different aspects of the ecosystem um, development and, and, and it concluded very clearly like that one thing, if, if nothing else, like what is the most important thing is the connectivity. The more connectivity is increased, the more directly it co correlates with uh, uh, the growth uh, of the ecosystem and the growth of the companies from the ecosystem. And of course the connectivity doesn't just mean number of connections, but it's also effectiveness of that connectivity. And uh, the speed of collective execution and learning is the new unfair advantage. So when we are in the digital world, it's all about how much data we have, how quickly we can make conclusions, reliable conclusions out of that data to make decisions that will help us move forward. And in that, the learning is a key piece. The more there is information, about the various aspects and ability to analyze and conclude things, the faster the collective learning is. And this combination really is the new unfair advantage. So those who have better systems to have more accurate data, more real time, more historical data to compare, more comparable different actors to compare, the quicker that this information can be pulled out, the quicker it can be visualized and analyzed and looked from collectively from multiple perspectives together in a forum, in an operator, sharing this knowledge, the more, the more advantage is being built uh, for the global competitiveness. And now the question is to ask, 
where is this happening now and where is it not happening now and comparing the pace of progress of those who have this with those who don't have this and i think it's very obvious that we can all imagine very clearly the types of actors who do and the types of actors who don't and what is the difference between their ability to push their development forward it really is the unfair advantage so the data information and knowledge is really the gasoline it's really the thing that that not only tells you what's happening but inspires you with new thoughts to see where things are missing what gaps there are what do we don't know um, what we don't even know that we don't know and uh, and so forth so really uh, the information and getting that information clean analyzed and available for all stakeholders this is the gasoline and to really make that work the data infrastructure is the engine <clears throat> So it doesn't matter even if that valuable information is siloed in individual organizations where they only use, it's like our brain capacity. A single organization only use that data for one purpose, for why they created it for. Maybe they could use, you know, instead of using 10% of what that could tell them, maybe they can expand that to 30%. But the point is not that, is what others can benefit from that information. If 99 other organizations can also pull 5%, 10% out of that individual's organization's data, that's collective benefit. But the beauty is that when combining and aggregating that data from multiple organizations for collective learning and new knowledge, now every organization can increase their own uh, capability to understand and develop their operations to much higher than 30% that they would ever get output of their own data. And this is exactly, again, connecting back to the uh, governance model and the ecosystem operator, how to really bring <coughs> uh, these things to existence. So the data infrastructure really is the, is the engine. And when we combine these things, the connectivity is the key factor, you know, the, the data is the knowledge, the, the pace of learning from the data is, is the unfair advantage. It really comes down to the digital ecosystem connectivity is the key factor for enabling all of this. Um, it's really, when we say the ecosystems are the invisible infrastructure, the digital ecosystem connectivity helps make that invisible infrastructure into understandable, manageable, uh, almost physical uh, existence so that it's much easier to see it, to understand it, to improve it, to develop while still being having all the benefits of it being digital that it can be much faster developed and you know, restructured and resaved than any physical infrastructure ever can be done. So it, it, it really is, is uh, significant. And if we just look at the, 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 the increasing value of, of data, there's more and more data available every day. Um, and the global data economy is predicted that three, three, uh, three trillion uh, at this point uh, is for 2020 out of the, the, the world economic development World Economic, World Economic Development Forum and EU um, and by 2020 the value of personalized data alone will be 1 trillion euros so almost 8% of the EU's GDP and this is obviously connected why Europe has introduced the GDPR regulation <coughs> is that, that this value doesn't just disappear from EU uh, without having a structure how this value first even becomes visible 
while it's still fully uh, uh, open to, to build businesses around that, including foreign businesses. But it doesn't get ignored, it doesn't remain invisible. But CDPR really helps to bring the whole personal data visible to everyone. And it creates new systems, and we are taking that into account in, in our work for, for several years already. But the key is to understand the value uh, of data. So, in addition, data is power. So, so data for sure uh, can be also used in different ways, and it represents power in a new way. Information has always been power since the days of, you know, uh, increasing knowledge in people or in, in point of uh, trying to control media and in that sense this is nothing new but it's just the, the, the flexibility and the dynamics of how the data lives today's world is at a totally different level and people's ability to cope and understand these topics at the same time is not developing equally uh, around the world. So. Uh, Data is, is power and it can also be misused and, uh, and this is also why it's extremely important that each of the ecosystems have their own operators that are working on their own local mandates and that they are structured uh, the, the, how to make it work and look at the, the, the proper rights of every actor uh, from a properly mandated perspective. Um, but again, to, as, a, uh, as to highlight that if it's not getting done in the local ecosystem setting, doesn't mean that the, those things wouldn't be happening anyway. It's just different actors that are doing that for different purposes. So, <clears throat> When we look at the value of data in the context of KPIs, in the form, context of information, we need to also look at from the con, uh, from the perspective of automation. And uh, because uh, when we put digital infrastructures in place, when we, in simple forms, when all of us when we use applications, when we click a button, when we enter a site, when we reload a page, whatever that is, that's some action. Uh, when we send an email, the other party can know if it's been read or not. You know, there's tons and tons of these actions happening all the time. But we need to look at the positive side of that and really think of how can we trigger automated actions that are actually beneficial for the ecosystem uh, challenges. So this can be that someone opens an application, there can be email up updates going to multiple places, uh, someone responds to notification, there can be social media updates happening or CRM records updates, there can be business intelligence created. One or unlimited number of actions can follow any action that, that, that makes sense. So to turn that into positive side, we all understand or have general understanding about how advertising works in, in online, in Facebook or Google. We see, search for something and we get better match uh, results uh, of advertised, suggesting in context of what we specifically search for, or when our profiles are read based on our interactions, we are shown advertising that should be relevant. Those have technical limitations and they, they don't work uh, because of the, some of the, 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 the outdated technologies, but in general it should be that if we turn that in a positive way, if my profile as an entrepreneur is known, I should get more guided information of most relevant events to me. Uh, if I'm doing a post about trying to find a co-founder, I would rather see you know, LinkedIn people profiles that uh, highlight people that are potential co-founders. Uh, and this doesn't, of course, you can have local applications uh, and most likely should have 
but the point being that there's uh, from functionality perspective there is enormous amount of existing methods and technologies that can be applied to bring much more and more specific value uh, for any of the ecosystem actors than just you know showing ads so showing most potential investors showing most potential co-founders most relevant events and so forth <clears throat> and uh, if the importance of, of uh, getting these infrastructures in place, getting actors who can build these infrastructures locally, uh, uh, and the value of data is not yet clear enough, then the next big evolution or development is of course the artificial intelligence. And uh, artificial intelligence is directly like directly connected with the quality and availability of data. So the less there is data, uh, the less there is possibility to develop AI businesses or AI services or AI anything. <clears throat> so uh, all of the big digital giant companies are developing more and more ways how they can collect more and more data that they can use to help train their artificial intelligence to, to, to do more efficient services, uh, uh, human-assisted uh, services, AI-driven models, and it's directly dependent on the available data. So, so then, of course, this depends on whether it's from customer service calls or whether this is from search results or whether this is data from photos, you name it, that is the way how the data learn, uh, the AI can be trained. And the quality of AI is directly dependent on the quality of the data. So poor data means poor AI, but we can also say that poor data, it doesn't need to be artificial intelligence, it's also human intelligence that the poor data means pure intelligence also for us humans. So it's, it's important for us, but it's even more important uh, for AI. Uh, humans have capability of re read intelligence, uh, even much worse data than AI ever can. But, um, but this is exactly the challenge that, that, uh, that getting additional benefits, developing even more advanced features, uh, uh, features in the future <clears throat> require the data as well. So while AI may feel too far for ecosystem development uh, today, it's not going to be that like that forever. So five years from now, 10 years from now, it's the same as thinking of your ecosystem 10 years ago. What was important then, what is important now, the only difference is that the types of actions that are not started today are not going to be available uh, there. So there's the, the saying that the best time to plant a tree was you know, 50 years ago. The next best moment is today. So, so same applies to these things. When we look at the ecosystem development, there is never the right time, but, but past and today. <clears throat> so if we look at uh, from the interconnectivity and the digital aspect perspective for like vision of well how does this could like look at then in the, in the sense of, uh, uh, of the user experience in an ecosystem. So, so we mentioned that the, one of the operators role is to really look at how is the ecosystem level user experience. So how could it look like from the perspective of uh, ecosystem actor? So the, when we clean it all up, when we just don't think about any of the technologies in the background, what do we want? We just want what we want. And we want to get the shortest way to get that information. So this is the level of where 
we should be thinking, where the ambition levels should be created, but we should also understand that there are different steps how we can get there. But the good thing that they have, all of those steps in, exist, all of those steps are logical. There are uh, validations from different industries, from different use cases to see how they can be done, how they have benefited things. But we just need to bring all of that into ecosystem development context and get to work and start making and putting those in place. And then we have to be able to do it sustainably so that it's not, you know, project-based funding or uh, a vision for one government and then gets thrown out of power and then there's another government who then comes up and uh, decides that, well, this is not really important, there's other important things. So that's why it really needs a sustainable governance model and structure and mandate from big enough group that even, even uh, those who could be in, temporarily in a position to change it don't want to do it because of the, uh, the political outcome, for example. So <clears throat> when we look at uh, then what we are doing on the startup commons side to support this uh, is we are building that um, uh, data infrastructure solutions. And uh, you can consider that as, as in a way of, of building any other infrastructure, like building roads to your city. It's not that we have like, you know, roads in our inventory and we just, you know, put roads in place that here's one piece of road and here's another, but it's more of uh, utilizing all of the knowledge, the existing technologies, the documentations, the data models and so forth, and then uh, adapting and, uh, and installing or implementing them in your own ecosystems together with the best local talents where we just bring the core knowledge or any of the missing pieces or then the pieces that are already being collectively developed by uh, existing ecosystem actors uh, together with us being under open standards like the growth academy curriculum or some of the other components so with this we built the infrastructure in such a way where um, organizations don't need to think how do I connect to five different organizations or how do I connect my application to, to, to this and this and this, this application in a local setting but only think how do I connect myself into this shared infrastructure one connection to then have through that infrastructure connection to any number of other actors who in our ecosystem have connected to that infrastructure and, and that's the point of the, the data infrastructure is to take all of the connectivity pain away. Uh, it's like, you know, how our phones work. I only need to know where I want to call. The operator takes care of that, all the heavy lifting uh, to make that happen. So that's why you need a local operator to be the operator, but we can help on the technologies and, and these types of things. And these are the things that we are, we are working on on the digital side. And the key data categories and data models are to, 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 to people and entities. So these are individuals and the companies. So it's the talent and entrepreneur, and then it's their startup or the support organization and their people. And then it's ecosystem support services and activities. So what are the entities creating as their services and what steps or activities those services include and then what other activities there's happens between services and actors and so forth and then ecosystem development initiatives and projects so how to track the progress of the initiatives that we put in place to develop our ecosystems uh, how do we measure them what status they are um, how they have made progress and uh, so forth and then ultimately the, the key aspect of uh, the whole ecosystem level key performance indicators and visualizations and reporting so data around cross-cutting measures uh, around any of the other key categories and for the data that is being captured uh, we develop 
the open standard data models, which is not the data itself, it's the model of how that data is structured and how, how that model can be used in connecting that data, what we have through that model to more shareable uh, format. And <clears throat> then when we look at how the interaction with uh, multiple ecosystems look like, this could be a, a small countries, four top cities, national setup. But at the same time, there is no factor of scale because the point to open standards and this shared uh, development mentality is to make things scalable. So it doesn't matter whether there's one ecosystem or whether there is 2000 ecosystems because the key is to take that into account in the design of, of the models being created. So now it's, it's uh, more data, more shareable, more transferable, more, more connectivity, but operated by local ecosystem operators. So no data moves uh, without clear decision that data want to be moved. So the ecosystem operator works what are the rules in the local settings and what are the rules when this data is connected with other structures and that data can physically reside in any of the existing applications where it is now at the moment. It's the connectivity infrastructure. It's not building a global database of data. So, so it's the building the connectivity and the models of how that connectivity can happen and that data can flow based on the decisions that any individual actor uh, or if it's collected, aggregated ecosystem level data, how does the operator choose to share that data with others? So connecting back with, uh, with some of the, the, the visualization we used in the module one as well, to really put the ecosystem operator uh, in place uh, as a governance model, someone from a neutral perspective, really only looking at the ecosystem as a whole, not being an operator of individual support function per se. And the other aspect, looking all the underlying connectivity as the key piece to make the information flow, make the information visible, to carry the knowledge over time and acting as the neutral operative actor for representing under mandate all of the ecosystem actors collectively. And when we apply the digital infrastructure uh, visualization on top of this picture, where we have the, the business creators, ideas, products, businesses, we have the service providers, and we apply the digital infrastructure on top of that, we can see how the ecosystem connectivity through APIs, through standards and documentation for connections, open standard data models, data sharing principles, how that looks like by connecting the service side data. So this is, um, if it's an event organizer, uh, the, the event organizer side information, data that they have about their event, to who it is for, when it's happening, ticket prices, whatnot. And then there is always uh, the customer side. So the, the one who registered, when did they register, for what event they registered, and who they are, their name, their address, and so forth. So the, every service has these kind of two pieces uh, when it comes to serving uh, ecosystem actors. So then there's a uh, consideration for how that user data can be portable under regulations like in Europe, GDPR, across different services, and how the individual whose data is in question can actually themselves benefit the most um, by using that same data in the context of different services and also learning more about their own behavior uh, with the connection of these different services and aggregated aspect of 
of that information. So two key pieces, combining, collecting individual's data under their control and making that data portable between the services brings also the capability to measure their progress throughout the ecosystem and their activities that they can share if they want to under their consent. Uh, and then the other part is collecting information of various different services and the actual service data uh, that is collected by the service uh, actor or the organization. And aggregating this information and then making that uh, aggregated data available uh, and creating new visualizations and new applications from that like, like dynamic service mapping up-to-date information about the services, uh, events, availabilities, uh, visibility of ecosystem development projects and their outputs, uh, ecosystem portal just to showcase the information in a dynamic way uh, that is being collected uh, from these different aspects and looking at the KPIs, the performance of different activities measured. So this is how the infrastructure looks like in a simplified uh, visualized, visualized format um, in, in practice laid on top of these key activities that uh, are happening in the ecosystem that we covered in more detail in, in the module one. And uh, <clears throat> as we already talked, there is many different types of data uh, so there isn't only the type of thinking and data as we experience as individuals today when we use Facebook or Google. Uh, there's data that is, exists in public systems, in private systems, in small systems, in big systems, in global systems, in local systems, in custom systems, in paper format. The key is whatever that is, it needs to be categorized properly and specific rules need to be applied on the type of category of data in question. So there's profiling data, there's information and analytics data, there's statistics and benchmarking data, there's activity data, business data, user data. And we need to give control uh, in these systems, ultimate control for those who are the owners of the data to decide which data they make private which they make public and which may they give access per request if they trust the, the requester. And, uh, and there's from same data element or, or topic, multiple different perspectives can be created. So while users data is who they are, what they did, but also from that what they did can be called statistical data that is doesn't need to connect at all to the actual individual in question to be useful. So, so um, but the key is to really understand data in different levels and also uh, categorizing and creating the, the controls around these. <clears throat> so one of the big misconceptions that exist when, when ecosystems start to build the digital solutions is to build the portal and trying to create a one silo uh, of database where they connect and combine all of this data, oftentimes manually adding it there uh, just to show how that, uh, how that uh, information would look like. Being a significant initial manual effort, oftentimes significant ongoing manual effort uh, that doesn't produce quality data because what ends up happening is that it's not built as an infrastructure and because of the laborers aspect of maintaining that portal then uh, those who create the portal start to limit the information that they want to display because it's so laborious to get that information there to the first place. So it is limiting the usefulness by design because it's not uh, rightly architectured. So that's why the portal should be only a way to display data that is being collected with proper infrastructure in place 
and not a separate silo that is, is built by manually collecting information elsewhere into a single central database just to be displayed uh, in a digital form. <clears throat> And, uh, and when we think about uh, this uh, from the perspective uh, in, a, in, a, in a more global perspective, <coughs> and we think about these ecosystems, we have individual city local ecosystems, we have uh, a neighboring city or another city in the same region, we have a country that have one or multiple regions that have multiple cities. Um, these are each to be considered geographical ecosystems um, or geographically located uh, or, or geographically understood ecosystems. And then we have business vertical ecosystems. We can have fintech, we can have blockchain, we can have medical, we can have health, we can have you know IoT, we can AI. We can have manufacturing, we can have cars. It doesn't matter, we can have these business vertical ecosystems. The, the key to understand is that business vertical ecosystems are more cross-cutting and they, they, they cover multiple different geographical ecosystems where they interconnect. But the key thing is that uh, any ecosystem element be a startup or a investment fund uh, typically is and want to be included in multiple ecosystems at the same time. So if we think an investment fund is in a specific city, making investments in a specific business vertical, but wants to operate nationally or even internationally making investments. So not only one city, region in the whole country or even cross country, uh, but they only focused on one specific industry vertical type of investments. Or it can be very early stage startup that is only part of one city local ecosystem, still unclear of whether they belong to one or multiple business vertical ecosystems with their solution or so forth. <clears throat> but this is to really understand where does the the benefits of collaboration come from because none of those actors enjoy at least doing manually going to register in different portals and being part of different places and always carrying and manually entering their data or maintaining their data in multiple different systems. So it doesn't also work from their perspective either. And uh, if there's more shared infrastructure more ability to be present in multiple places that also increases the information that the ecosystem operators and the whole ecosystem can have about the activities of a fund or a startup growth or development across multiple ecosystems of course with the consent of the individual in question of the company in question or the service in question but technically it's taken care of then it's up to the business rationale whether they want to share or not. So this is the important to understand also uh, how the presence between ecosystems go. So we can then also look at uh, the interfaces, how to connect different ecosystems and what ecosystems we need to think of connecting with. So we can have, you know, city A wanting to connect with city B, we can have city A wanting to connect with business uh, or business vertical ecosystem B. We have the city level to, to regional that have different types of activities. The regional operator can have very different level focus, more aggregated focus than a city level that look at more operative actors, activities. And they can also share responsibilities when they can design between you know, city government, local government, how do they pull their resources to operate these ecosystems. You have regional geographical location with national geographic, you can have national with national and so forth. And the key to really understand is the aspect that each of these ecosystems can have 
shared data elements of multiple things, locations, venues, spaces, people, service organizations, services, companies, startups, and so forth. So all of the knowledge or information about the ecosystem can be present in one or multiple ecosystems. So there's obvious benefits <coughs> of collaborating not only at the ecosystem level between the actors, but cross ecosystem when it comes to digital. And unfortunately, because this collaboration doesn't happen, the winning model at the moment is proprietary companies just blanketing everything with whatever they want to blanket with their free services, indirect business models to capture the data uh, and uh, getting happy users uh, who willingly give that data. And the, the challenge really comes from the local economic development and local ecosystem development perspective is that that, uh, that, that is not a sustainable approach uh, to develop uh, digital competitiveness uh, locally in the long term. <laughs> so interfaces within the ecosystems we then have, you can think these also like matching pairs like uh, like what you can benefit by by uh, better matching between these actors, better connectivity between these actors, or even even further more automation between these actors. Talents and startups. How do I find co-founders? How do I expand my team with right talent? Talent and events. How do we get the right audience in place that can most benefit from what we have to offer? talents and co-working space, how do we find the right talent to our co-working space depending on what uh, type of activities we want to cater for, whether it's more distance, uh, SME oriented, whether it's more design group or, or whatnot, and so forth. So, so really to start understanding um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a common language way what the digital actually helps to, to do better uh, more scalable way. Humans always do things better, but it's not scalable in the in the ways of, uh, for example, doing introductions between companies, introductions between co-founders. Uh, there's an extremely low number of volume that can be handled, and the number uh, uh, and the amount of knowledge that a person can carry to be able to connect right people with right other people or companies or elements or events and so forth. So <clears throat> in, in the context of using an analogy of a telecom industry, um, so because that's a lot what we have used so far as well, the ecosystem operators really are like the mobile uh, or um, mobile operators. They are like, you know, the same as uh, um, what else that? AT and T in US, or Orange, or or uh, or Roger in Canada, or so forth, and, uh, and and they really are the ones who just look at that the infrastructure work, and they look at and operate under mandate from government and public side, and all of the key actors from the ecosystem. The applications in mobile, where there's you know the phones that connect to that network that operate, operator operates, are like the applications. We can think of Eventbrite, CRM systems, uh, Facebook, uh, Spreadsheet, wherever that application that is being used to collect and manage the information in a specific service or in a specific company. Uh, those are those applications are like the devices connecting to to this network. And Standard Commons, we provide standards. Uh, we work on the standards, helping to improve the connectivity, uh, operator network infra, and to help enable roaming. So making sure that you can just you know connect in any operator's network with your application. So that's what we are working on the, on the digital side and 
And of course, we help to set up operators. We help to connect those applications to the network. Uh, uh, but we mostly do that from the R&D perspective. We do that from deep knowledge perspective of not only the digital world, but the innovation, entrepreneurship, and startup ecosystem development world, all combined, taking those aspects into account and, uh, and really to help uh, get this set up and operational. But all of the local responsibilities should be the local operations, lo local resources, local talent, local development companies, local system, as much as there is available, local applications or global applications, if those are already uh, the mostly used ones. It doesn't really matter. The key is to build the connectivity between them and have an operator who makes the information flow. And we help to work that the, the, the local decisions made are aligned with open global standards between other operators and, and so forth. So I'll stop here just to check if there's any questions. We don't have any, Balto. All right. All right. All right, so next uh, we'll focus on, on uh, standards. So we've been talking a lot about the open standards. So, so uh, that what does it mean uh, more specifically? So it's really the, the key thing to, to help the data flow. So, <clears throat> So we all can relate to uh, how it feels when the standards are not uh, working for us. So we can all understand that the, like the, from the historical perspective, how standards have emerged, how they have spread the world. Uh, they have been seen as competitive advantages. But ultimately, when we get down to it, uh, we then experience this uh, for example, how the national standards look for those who travel or work globally is the, 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 the power outlets. <clears throat> we also know how from user experience level it feels when we have global standards like the Wi-Fi uh, and how nice it is to go in another place and just pull out your laptop and ask permission to connect but you, technically it is being taken care of. And, and that's very much uh, the, the perspective we want to bring to the table, that standards, connectivity, digital are needed to make sure that the connectivity is there by default, standard, working globally, uh, but it's still a separate question. Do I let someone to connect? Do I share my data? But that is then a question, decision that can be made at the time. <clears throat> if that interconnectivity if the standards don't exist, it doesn't matter. If you have Wi-Fi and they don't, they have something totally different. It doesn't matter. If they say, yeah, sure, you can use our network. Oh, but it's not compatible. Then, okay, well, now you have a right, but you, can, you don't have means because it was not designed like that. So this is really uh, uh, about the standards. So for data infrastructure, uh, preparing for data-driven ecosystem that takes into account all ecosystem actors and items. So when we look at um, the individual application, if we break it down a bit more, a typical application includes the user interface, there is the business logic for the features, of, uh, of what the application does. Then there's the actual features, the software code. Then there's something to connect that code with the database, uh, the data access layer. So that's the, the, as an example, a 
MySQL database. So this is a typical application, kind of simplified. And all of the applications in the ecosystem are somewhat or mostly structurally the same. I mean, there can be different software language, there can be a different database model, but ultimately there's the user interface, business logic, code and database. So now we have CRM, event system, platform, so the portal is no different, project tools, social networks. And when we think about these applications, they are like the, the, the wells. It's, it's, not, it's people put information in and they pull information out. So instead of well, or actually well, the, the water just comes there and just put it, pull it out, but, but uh, they are silos, they're not connected in any systematic way. So however, the water flows between these is random. So limited use flow and distribution. So application silos, meaning that the information of this digital knowledge actually trans is transferred between humans. So that's not very efficient. So meaning that, okay, let me pull a report out of my system and send it to you as a PDF or let me export an Excel sheet, Excel sheet and you can see this data and you can analyze. And the other person is, okay, I can see it, I can play around with it, it depends on how it was pulled out, it depends on what data was put in, it depends on what the model is. Uh, if I want to enter that into my system, most likely I would just, depending on the amount of information, I would just manually enter it, or I need a developer to put it in or have an import system for that uh, but it means that some like people actually need to proactively move that information between the systems so the data sharing today is, is looking like this so i'm pulling water from one place and i'm taking it to another one in a, this you know whatever digital format pdf excel sheet that's my bucket i'm moving this data from one place to another so then the API is the application to application sharing is the application programming interface, aka the API makes it possible to move that data from one system to another. Um, there's other ways as well, but the API is the common term uh, and the specific uh, model. Now what it means that now a person in another application could actually read data from another system. So that's basically the, uh, the or they could actually use software features of another software uh, through another software. So now it means that it, it's designed and put in place once, but once it's there, it can be used immediately as many times as possible uh, with or without business terms attached, free or with cost. So it just means that the human from their user interface can use data or functions of another system depending on business terms, but it requires connect once and use as many times as you want. So of course we take the water analogy, now we have automating data sharing. It's like, okay, let's put some, uh, some connectivity in place between uh, multiple uh, applications of getting water out. So now we can share the water and we can get it out from any of the applications. It doesn't matter, I can go application A, B or C and I get the same water out. But as we discussed about uh, the complexity of connecting multiple systems, if I want to connect one system to two systems, I have to build two connections. If I want to connect one system to three systems, I have to build three connections. Uh, and all of the three need to build three connections as well. So to make that more efficient, it means that we need to connect a, a smarter connectivity system that I only connect once and I can connect to any number of systems that are connected to same approach. So now we are talking about pipes instead of applications and we're talking about data flows. So how the information flows and not only stays in the silo that we have put that data, but how that is actually flows and is available on any outlet or system that we want to uh, pull it out from. So really bringing it to the maximum use, maximum flow 
maximum distribu distribution, ma maximum availability. So this is the difference between the data pipes and with data silos. So aka applications of today are not connected, they are just silos of different size. So even Facebook is a silo from a Google ecosystem. So you can move data from Facebook to, to Google. You can pull your, you can update uh, your Facebook profile information from a Google application. So, and there's business reasons why they haven't built those connections, but when it looks at Google ecosystem, they have pipes there inside of their applications. You look at Facebook ecosystem, they have pipes between Instagrams and WhatsApps and, and so forth. You look at Amazon. Now we look at the ecosystems. We look at uh, one of the, the most important drivers of our economies and societies for job creations, for economic growth and economic development. We are in the age of the wealth. So we are in the age of non-connected uh, applications. And that's the big transition, the digital transformation that needs to happen uh, as part of the ecosystem development. But it requires much more than just technology. It requires all the various other aspects uh, that we, we started this mod uh, module today from. So now, uh, this is the challenge, the problem uh, picture, uh, where we need that operator with the proper governance model and resources to start solving and to bring it more into a connectivity solution like this. And then <clears throat> the comes the question of ownership. So the, the key is to make the software shared. So the more the software is shared, the more cost-effective cost is the development and uh, the maintenance uh, and upkeeping of the software because of the shared documentation, shared software base, shared talent pool to help develop the software. So software sh uh, should be aimed as, as uh, uh, either open source or shared software licensing terms, or they can be, of course, proprietary software terms as well. But the key would be that the more uh, the so same software is shared, the more easier it is to build the connectivity, and the application should be designed around best support practices of ecosystems from to get the right business logic, and then have the best software to support that, and then help spread those softwares across multiple ecosystems. And we want to support that by whenever your ecosystem have great applications for any of the support functions or being that portal or whatnot, we're more than happy um, to help spread that software to other ecosystems uh, and, and, uh, and in, un, under different terms, uh, either just to introductions marketplace, uh, but what we don't want to is we don't want to support those software, we don't want to operate those software, we don't want to upkeep those softwares. Those should belong to those who actually have the software that they want to share, or the local operator who takes into his shared software and puts it into place. We look at uh, to developing the connectivity, data models, connectivity, uh, and, and so for uh, the overall ecosystem development aspect where these all connect. And then data, data should belong to rightful owners. And the rightful owner should, depends on uh, the regulation, it depends on the business terms. Uh, so if it's data that you generate yourself as your business or support function, uh, with your own resources, then most likely you are the rightful owner of that data and you decide where that data sits, where you share, with what terms, free or paid access to that data is. If you're a public sector, then now you're working with public money. It's run through individuals, the citizens, through taxes and so forth. So most 
public services, share the data as open data, meaning that it's both free, it's universally made available. So as a public service, you most likely want to make that data that you generate through your own activities that you would be the rightful owner, but because it's generated, paid by a public, you should make it free for the public. That's the common model uh, that is uh, spreading with the public data. Of course, it doesn't include when the public has information about the individuals, then of course that cannot be made open data. And then if you're an individual, then you should have the right to your data. And this is specifically like the new type of regulation that is spreading, <clears throat> like the GDPR and the similar regulations is elsewhere, like CCPA coming into effect in California, uh, similar uh, regulations in Japan, in Canada, in Brazil, uh, and so forth, where more and more regulation starts to say that regardless of you having the data about the individual, they actually have the right to decide what can be done with that data. And they can also request that data for themselves. So the key is that the data always belongs to rightful owners.